do is uh, now I'm going to discuss and I'm going to show you some really important stuff, which is actually like uh, go, uh, hopefully I hope inshallah na, it would make you kind of think ke, matlab ke, uh, how can you improve or how can you like increase the impact of your research protocol. So first thing that I would like to uh, tell you is again the same thing that we discussed earlier in our first lecture. Please follow guidelines. And you know, there are specific guidelines available for writing protocol, which are known as SIRIT guidelines. And it stands for Standard Protocol Item Recommendation for Interventional Trials Guidelines. So if, because uh, uh, all of you are physical therapists and uh, probably just like, like the last class, many of you uh, will be planning some interventions, uh, in interventional trials. For example, uh, technique A versus technique B or physical modality A versus physical modality B. So it's going to be an interventional trial on human beings. So probably it would be a good idea to follow the spirit guidelines. And you need to understand that these guidelines are endorsed by more than 100 journals are all around the world, all uh, 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 good quality high ranking journals, including uh, our own uh, journal, uh, journal of Pakistan Medical Association and other uh, index journals. And other major research funders like uh, NHS and NIH, and also the Welcome Trust, they also have endorsed these spirit guidelines. So it is a good idea to go online and explore these uh, uh, spirit guidelines. Uh, spirit guidelines would provide you evidence-based guidance to facilitate the writing of protocol and improve the completeness of your content. So if you go and you just download the guidelines, they're a couple of pages long, not a big deal. It would give you, I just, whatever I explained you in the lecture, they are going to give you the same thing or even much better in form of a template. And you simply go through that template, you go through those headline headings and you know, you simply start doing whatever it is written in that. And if you make your research proposal as per the spirit guidelines, your proposal is going to be hopefully complete. It's going to be hopefully high impact and hopefully it's going to be accepted by your agency or your institute. And why we need to like, uh, create a high quality uh, uh, protocols, research protocols, because a high quality protocol can ensure or, or enable a rigorous trial implementation. If your outcome, if your uh, blueprint or your map is clear, it would mean that your work is going to be very clear as well. And this is ultimately going to enhance the quality and efficiency of the protocol review. Obviously, if the protocol is written well, the review process is going to be short. If the protocol is not written well, it will undergo a lot of revisions and it's going to uh, waste the time of the researcher. And it is ultimately going to reduce the burden of avoidable protocol amendments. Please remember, again, whenever we do research on humans or uh, living beings, you know, uh, we, uh, we should always expect the unexpected. And sometimes whatever you plan in the start, you have to make certain amendments. And you have to change certain things. It might be the dosage, the intervention, the follow-up and other things. And whenever you do that, you have to actually do amendments. But if your research protocol is as per the spirit guidelines, is it is of high quality, hopefully you will not undergo the hassle of repeated amendments. And it's going to save you time and it would keep you on track and hopefully you're going to do your research well in time. And you know, a good research protocol, a good uh, following, a good spirit guideline means making a good uh, research protocol and which means conducting a high quality research well in time. And then what would happen that these benefits can ultimately translate into better, more transparent trials, which would use less time and cost to conduct and review your research. So this is the value of following the spirit guidelines. So please in your own time, Go online, Google it out, download these guidelines and follow these guidelines while making your own research protocol. Uh, uh, this is a very unfortunate like trend, at least in uh, Pakistan, that you know, uh, most of the researchers, they tend to do the research and they tend to pay for all the cost of the research from uh, their own pockets. Now, I'm not against in you know, like uh, using your own money to conduct research, but whenever there's an option available for funding or uh, grant funding, you at least should apply for the research funding or research grant. Whatever my, uh, you know, like just my uh, teacher used to say, you know, if you don't ask, the answer is always going to be no. So if you don't ask for research funding, you are not going to get any research funding. So it's important that you apply for research funding. And the most important thing to understand is 
that research funding is honestly speaking nothing but again it is a research funding or uh, is uh, or grant proposal is nothing but actually your research protocol which also gives a detailed description of the financial implication of the research so you want to do a research uh, who is going to like uh, pay for the compensation of the patient you are going to do the research who is going to to pay for the uh, 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 who is going to pay for the uh, questionnaire validation uh, you are going to do the research who is going to pay for the statistical analysis to the by statistician who is going to pay for the literature review and the article that you have to pay in or uh, pay for in order to download who is going to pay for the open access fee uh, once you plan to publish that research in open access journal so all these things they will require a lot of money and you know simply if you after your research protocol if you start uh, uh, obviously uh, following the outline given by your own uh, department or your own institute or the uh, that uh, particular research uh, funding body you have to clearly explain that what is the financial implication of this research and how much it would cost this is going to be your grant proposal or your proposal and then you can actually and then you can uh, actually uh, get funding if possible uh, there is lot of option available again your option both inside pakistan outside pakistan inside pakistan mostly people get research funding from hec higher education commission of pakistan you can get research funding from uh, pakistan science foundation you can get research funding from phrc pakistan health research commission so there are lot many for, uh, funding option available inside pakistan and both outside pakistan so please whenever you write a good research proposal try to apply for the funding as well if you are going to do a clinical trial please remember you have to register your clinical trial before you start uh, conducting your active study and this has to be mentioned uh, inside your research proposal as well that why and where you are going uh, that where you are going to register your clinical trial and i told you this thing very clearly earlier as well if you are planning to do an interventional trial if you are planning to do a randomized controlled trial no good journal including the index journals of pakistan are going to publish your study if you do not have a clinical trial registry number and the other thing that you need to uh, understand is that you cannot get a clinical trial registry number retrospectively so if you forgot to uh, register your trial and get a clinical trial registry number for your randomized control trial i'm really sorry but no good biomedical journal in this world is going to publish your clinical trial in their journal you have to work on this thing before you start your research so that's again a very important aspect of writing a research protocol and you need to understand that who world health organization uh, it says that registration of all interventional trial is considered to be scientific ethical and moral responsibility of the researcher because of following reasons number one there is a need to ensure that decision about healthcare are informed by all of the available evidence right it helps reduce publication bias and selective reporting because what used to happen you know when people did not used to like uh, publish their uh, 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 did not used to research their clinical trials so whenever their trials were positive they used to publish that in form of research article and whenever their trials were negative they did not used to publish it so what we had we had a bias in which positive trials were being reported but negative trials were being not reported but if you have a clinical trial registry where everyone like uh, registers their trial then you are very much clear that in the last 5 years let's say uh, 20 trials were done on this particular drug and i can see only five positive uh, researches coming out of that uh, try uh, of all those trials in the last 3 years so where are rest of the 15 trials and there's a possibility that rest of the 15 trials were actually negative trials that they did not prove that this thing was right so that's why you need to uh, understand this and again uh, the declaration of helsinki also clearly states that every clinical trial must be registered in a publicly accessible database before the recruitment of the first subject so before you start your research you have to ensure that your clinical trial is registered in a publicly accessible database i'm going to give you the list just now then again if uh, improving the awareness of similar or identical trials will make it possible for researcher and funding agencies to avoid unnecessary duplication just imagine i just uh, i gave you example of that uh, clinical trial registry so if you go on clinical trial registry and you see that lot many researchers are already available on the topic that you want to research so probably it's not a good idea to reinvent the wheel you please go to some other topic or you identify some other research gap so it is only possible if we have a clinical trial registry where people actually register their trials 
and other people and the circle, they get to know that what has been done and what is being planned for the future. And then they can go for an alternative route or alternative title. Then describing clinical trials and progress can make it easier to identify gaps in clinical trial research. So I mean, again, you uh, uh, can identify research gaps not only by doing a literature search on articles and theses. You can also actually identify research gaps by going on the clinical trial registries. And then you can see that what research is being planned in the next three, five, ten years. And it would give you that what research gap is still there that I can then uh, fulfill. Then making researchers and potential participants aware of recruit recruiting trials may facilitate recruitment. So if your uh, clinical trial is registered on a clinical trial registry, there's a possibility that other researchers are going to visit that clinical trial registry. There's a possibility other patients are going to uh, visit that clinical trial registry. And if they are uh, fulfilling the enrollment criteria, they might want to enroll in your research. So it would give you a chance to recruit more patients in a much quicker way. And again, you know, if you uh, enroll your uh, or register your trial in a clinical trial registry, it would uh, uh, help the other researchers and healthcare pr practitioner to identify trials in which they may have an interest. And it then could in future result in more effective collaboration. Now, there are a lot many options available for trial registration. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have a, a trial registry in Pakistan, but most of the countries, they have their own clinical trial registry. You can see Australia, New Zealand, Brazil, China, uh, Republic of Korea, India in our neighborhood has their own clinical trial registry. Cuba has one, European Union, Germany, Iran has one. Japan has a separate, even Thailand, Netherlands, African, Peruvian, even Sri Lanka has a clinical trial registry. Very unfortunate, Pakistan, to the best of my uh, knowledge and literature search, Pakistan does not have uh, their own clinical trial registry. So for people like you who do not have a, a local uh, clinical trial registry of their own country, uh, options for you are two. Uh, number one is the international standard randomized controlled trial number. So if your research is a RCT or a randomized controlled trial, you might want to go on the website of ICRCTN or .com. Or if it is, if it is an other kind of trial, you might want to go for clinicaltrials.gov. So option for you and me are either international standard randomized controlled trial number or clinicaltrials.gov. The last and probably the most important thing of this lecture is that please publish a protocol. Now it might uh, sound very odd to you that how can I publish my protocol which is actually simply a overview or simply a roadmap or simply a plan. I have not even recruited my first patient. I don't have any data in front of me. I haven't run any statistical analysis. I don't have any discussion. So how can I publish your protocol? Please remember the world is changing at a very fast pace. We are living in times where everyone is like fond of publishing anything that you want to publish. But you need to understand that lot many options for publication have uh, uh, made uh, are made available to researchers in the last few years. And one of them is to publish your protocol. Uh, now you might uh, say that uh, is there any journal that publish protocol? Yes, there are lot many journals. There are many like websites that publish protocols. I'm only going to give you example as food for thought. So there's a uh, index biomedical journal by Lippincott known as Medicine, and as you can see on the screen they uh, publish uh, protocols, right? Then Emerald Open Research is again a research journal online available. And again, you know, uh, uh, it also publishes study protocols. Uh, Bio Protocol is an uh, uh, online uh, website which uh, publishes high quality uh, protocols for basic life sciences, right? Then again, uh, BMC Public Health. So if you are planning a research in the domain of public health, you might want to publish your research protocol in BMC Public Health, which is, by the way, an indexed biomedical journal with an impact factor. Even British Medical Journal uh, has recently started their uh, another uh, sister journal known as BMG Open. And if you can actually see this one and read this one, uh, these lines which I've highlighted in the uh, uh, bottom, all research study, oops, sorry, all research study types are considered. Uh, from study protocol through phase one trials to meta-analysis. So you can actually publish your study protocol in BMG Open as well, right? Okay, apart from that, uh, protocols.io is another web online website and you can actually uh, submit your protocol. 
and they would actually generate a DOI for you, digital object identifier. And then you can actually claim that this particular protocol is only yours and nobody can like uh, uh, steal it for, from you. And specifically, if you talk of physical therapy, so you need to uh, also need to know that the physical therapy journal, which is one of the leading uh, biomedical journal in the field of physical therapy, they also publish protocols. Now, I'm not saying that it's a pretty easy thing to do, but it is something that is doable. And since most of you are going to spend a lot of time and effort on writing the research protocol, so it's a good idea if you actually convert your research protocol into a publication. And uh, since all of these are international biomedical journals, so it might be a good idea to get at least a chance in publishing in an international biomedical journal even before you start recruiting your first patient. So what you, uh, what I need you to do is uh, go through these websites and explore the instruction to author. Some of them actually they ask you for uh, uh, publication uh, for money. Um, and if you don't have any funding available, you can actually go for those uh, who do not uh, ask for any uh, uh, publication fee. But it's something doable and it's going to increase the impact of the research that you are planning. So please do explore this option. So the summary is that the search protocol is an important component of search planning because it provides you a clear roadmap and outline and path for the planned research. And it would help you avoid errors and disappointments during the conduct of the research once you are in the field. And the search protocol is a potential publication. So please try to publish your search protocol in form of a publication. Uh, please send me uh, this uh, an email and I'm going to uh, sh uh, share the uh, presentation with you.